When I set out to make this video, I just thought that this would be a cool place to visit. I wanted to explore this abandoned tract of land where well over 400 people died under the blackness of a midnight sky. Join me as I wander the remains and tell the tale of one of the worst civil engineering disasters of all time. See, here is where the St. Francis Dam failed and has sadly been all but forgotten. I'm here atop the largest piece of remaining debris from the St. Francis Dam collapse. This pile of concrete is estimated at 15 tons. It's known as the Pyramid. St. Francis was a gigantic dam, 700 feet long, over 205 feet tall, and it held back over 12.5 billion gallons of very wet water. Originally, it was built as a reservoir for the growing city of Los Angeles and started construction in 1924 under the guiding mind of William Mulholland. He's known as the father of Los Angeles' municipal water system. The dam was finished just two years later, in 1926. Now the dam wasn't even two years old, but it was already showing signs of failure. Small leaks would spring, many would be inspected and repaired as necessary. However, one particular morning, a new muddy leak alarmed the dam keeper. His name was Tony Harnischweger. I probably said that wrong. And Tony summoned Mulholland and Mulholland's chief assistant, Harvey Van Norman, who inspected the dam, and he vouched for his safety. But sadly, 12 hours later, right after midnight, Tony and his six-year-old son, Coder, were among the first to die, followed by more than 450 others. The actual count of lives lost is still unknown. We'll probably never know. The water raged over the course of five and a half hours, over a 50-mile journey to the Pacific Ocean. It demolished entire towns, 1,200 houses. It washed out bridges, knocked out power lines. It set the strong steel lines of the trains off course. And bodies would wash ashore as far as south as San Diego. And I can only imagine what that must have been like. At a time when we feel most safe and comfortable, when we're in our homes, settling in for the night, sleeping. And I imagine many died upon impact. Many others probably suffered. I imagine the majority of those that died and those who survived had no idea what happened. Being out here, knowing this, it's just another reminder of how lucky I am. Now getting here to the site where the dam once stood firm is a fairly straightforward process. A quick Google search of St. Francis Dam location will light your path. There are two entrances, both are blockaded by cement barriers, and they both lead to abandoned roads that lead you in, each located at opposing ends of the disaster site. One is about a mile or so away from the site of the dam. I've entered through both, and both require some simple hiking to the site. But you can complicate it if you want to, just like I'm doing here, fulfilling my desire for exploration. And along the way, it's impossible not to notice the large broken pieces of concrete that litter the valley. These large boulders are pieces of the dam, some as big as houses and SUVs, and some pieces obliterated into nothing more than dust. And this small creek runs through the area. It's a mere trickle of the water that once raged here. And despite being such a historic event, it's another long forgotten story lost in time, even to most people in California. Nature has overtaken much of the old roads and walking paths. The contrast of the current serenity and beauty of this place against the dark catastrophe is not lost on me. Those who are here are mostly forgotten. There's a few memorials and gravestones in the area, but that's it. It's not even been a hundred years, and these people's names, they live on in the ink of newspapers and the ones and zeros of digital records. It reminds me of the importance of stories. The stories, like love, they're really the only part of us that ever really lives on. I'm extremely attracted to places where nature has reclaimed its territory, where the earth reminds us that it doesn't need us. It's just the opposite. We're more akin to a virus to the planet. We often talk about saving the world, but it's not the world that needs saving. It will remain, but we may not. What caused the dam to fail? Now, at the time, there were many theories about what happened. Mulholland actually took full responsibility despite not knowing what exactly did happen. And unfortunately, he'd never know. He died before any answers came. Today, we know it was a combination of events. We also know it wasn't because of anything Mulholland did, but rather because of what he couldn't have known at the time. The complications of working with nature and building the complex structures without really understanding the terrain, how other geographical elements would affect the dam, they were beyond the limits of engineering at that time. And like all failure, and I say this with obvious respect to what happened here, it was a tremendous learning experience. The failure of St. Francis Dam led to the birth of modern civil engineering practices and assessments. And there's a lesson in there for all of us. We can't blame our past selves. There's just simply no way that we could have known. We were operating with limited information, attempting to 
interpret this world with flawed minds that are often filled with and obstructed by our emotions and biases and selective reasoning. In other words, at any given time, if we live with honest efforts and good intentions of always doing our best, that's the best that we can do. So I want to leave here with a bit of perspective. As my good friend says, the leading cause of death is being alive. If you're watching and listening now, you're among the living. You are here. Congratulations. So let's consider the odds of your existence. The odds that you exist or any individual are estimated at 1 in 5.5 trillion. And with a statistic like that, it's quite obvious to me that you are meant to be here. That you matter, that your stories matter. So each morning when you wake up, as long as you have breath in your body and a thumping in your chest, you have the opportunity to create a life to remember. So thanks for hanging out with me today, and I hope to see you out in the wilds.